Okay. We will see the next um, um, video which will uh, focus um, more on the winding of the uh, motor itself. Okay. Coils of wire are known as windings. The simplest DC motor has just a single coil. These are a much simpler design. The problem though is that they can align magnetically which jams the motor and stops it from rotating. The more sets of coils we have, the smoother the rotation will be. This is especially useful for low speed applications. Therefore, we normally find at least three coils in a rotor to ensure smooth rotation. Each coil is positioned 120 degrees from the previous. Between each coil, we find a commutator plate. Each coil is connected with two commutator plates. The plates are electrically isolated from each other, except that they are now connected via the coils. So, if we connect the positive and negative terminals to two of the commutator plates, we can complete the circuit, current will now flow, and a magnetic field will generate in the coils. Okay, you can clearly see here that how the coils are uh, basically um, being um, wired up okay, to the commutators. So, in a bigger motor where so you have m more commutators uh, stacked against each other, so you will have um, a different arrangement or, or um, different ways of attachment of a coil to a commutator. Okay? And therefore, we'll um, uh, basically define the, the current route a different way. But in anyhow, what, what happens at the coil is that it creates a, an electromagnetic field um, around the coil okay? as you put the current in. The rotor or armature is made from multiple discs of iron which are laminated together. And this is what Each I said disc just now. is electrically insulated from one another with a lacquer coating. If the armature was a single piece of solid metal, large eddy currents would swirl around inside. These are caused by induced electromotive force or EMFs. The eddy currents affect the efficiency of the motor. To reduce the eddy currents, engineers segment the rotor into insulated discs. This way, the eddy currents will still flow, but they will be much smaller. The thinner the disc, the smaller the eddy currents will be. Okay, this is important. The commutator consists of small copper plates which are mounted to the shaft. Each plate is electrically isolated from one another as well as the shaft. The okay, so the, the, key com the key point here is that each of the commutator is insulated from each other and also the shaft. So there is no direct connection between each commutator with another commutator and there is no connection, I mean electrical connection, from the commutator to the shaft itself. Oil is connected to a different commutator plate. In this design, each commutator plate is connected with two coils. The plates deliver electricity to the coils. To get the electricity from the battery and into the plates, we have some brushes which rub against the plates. The brush arms hold these in place. When we complete the circuit, electricity will flow into the commutator segments by the brushes. And then it will flow. Okay, so you can see that uh, the, the connection or the, electric, the electrical connection to each of the uh, coil okay, will depend on where the brush is at that point. Okay, so if you can see here in this figure that the brush on the right and on the left is actually on the commutator plate side by side right and only the coil that are directly connected to that commutator is activated into one or two coils as a path becomes available at certain points in the rotation the brushes will come into contact with two plates this will create an arc and we get the okay what does what what he means here is that um oops sorry I will have to forward a bit. The plates deliver and sit arms hold these in place and into the plates. We have some brushes which rub against the plates. The brush arms hold these in place. Okay. When we so, complete the circuit, um, electricity will flow into the commutator two segments commutators by the at the same time. Okay. So for example, something like this. At the top is not releasing from the previous comm uh, commutator, but now like almost all of it are are on the second commutator. That's when the and spark then it will flow happens. Into one or two coils as a path becomes available. At certain points in the rotation, 
the brushes will come into contact with two plates. This will create an arc and we get these small bursts of blue light as this occurs. These arcs, as well as friction, will eventually destroy the brushes over time. Okay, so basically um, with arcs, uh, we, we, call, we call that like electrical arcs, but basically it, it is actually um, a sparks that happen uh, when you are changing the polarity. Okay, because you cannot change the polarity of the voltage uh, of the currents or in, the, uh, or in this case direction of the current or polarity of the voltages immediately. There is nothing instantaneous that happens in this world. So obviously you will have some delay in changing between positive and negative. So when that happens, the changes of the current or, or the drop of the current and the increase of the uh, uh, the different uh, or the opposite polarity uh, will cause a voltage kick or, or, or basically a voltage drop that will um, basically um, um, manifest it as a spark. Okay, so because of this sparking, the brushes itself will be wear, uh, will will be um, worn over time, and you have to replace them. Okay, so even part of the losses in um, uh, DC machines are actually because of the brushes itself. Okay, the rest of uh, this uh, video is uh, quite self-explanatory, but we don't need that uh, yet at this point. So we'll just um, go straight away from um, this point into how to enum enumerate the um, uh, calculation of the uh, induced voltage. Okay. Okay, so um, in DC machines, um, there are there will be a voltage induced um, in either whether it is a generator or a motor. Okay, uh, because uh, voltage will be um, induced uh, if you have, um, for example, in a generator, if you uh, externally rotate your shaft and uh, there is a magnetic field, then obviously with a movement and a magnetic field, you get a current flow inside. So there will be um, a voltage uh, or potential inside the machine. Okay, So you will induce voltage there. And in, the, in, in a motor, okay, when you power up your motor, as it moves, okay, as, it's, as, as it starts moving, then the you can see that the the coil of the motor is actually moving inside the magnetic field okay so therefore you will also have an induced voltage okay both in generators and motors okay so we will take a look first at um how we can uh, compute the amount of voltages that are inside the dc machines okay so we know that um if we uh, take a look at the simplest example of just a single loop, we know that there can be multiple loops, but just a single wire of coil that are located inside a, a what you call a permanent magnetic field, permanent magnet, the permanent magnets. Okay, so you have north side and south side. All right. So if you take a look at the front uh, at, at at the view of the field lines. Okay, so um. Uh, magnetic flux also behave like a current so it flows with the least resistance okay so basically um, uh, from the ferromagnetic uh, core to the from from the ferromagnetic core of a stator so obviously north and south here is a stator and inside this is a rotor and you can see this looks like a cylinder but we are actually approximating this cylinder with just a single coil for now. Okay, so if you look at the rotor, this is all made of a ferromagnetic core. Okay, and stator is made of, for example, um, a magnet. All right. So in between this uh, core, you have an air gap. And we have seen that from previous calculation in previous class that air gap has a very high resistance. So the only way to go through the, the, that high resistance is to go the shortest way possible, which is for any lines, the shortest way possible, possible is a straight line. 
so a straight line from the surface of a of a stator to a surface of a roto the straight line will always be perpendicular to the surface okay so that's why we have these curved lines here because the lines between uh, between the stator and the roto across the air gap must be straight okay must be perpendicular to the surface so as it enters it will curve along and as it exists uh, exits from the uh, roto it will go through the straight path again so that's why you see this kind of um uh, fit lines inside the machines okay now if you look at the top view of the coil uh, we know that we uh, if we label that as a b c and d okay we can see that um uh, there are um, sides of the coil that are perpendicular to the field lines we know that field lines are this way right okay so these uh, lines or, or this side of a coil and this side of a coil is perpendicular to the field lines because this is b and it's this side the vertical side so it is perpendicular to the field lines okay at this point right now so if we take a look at closer from the front view okay so this point this is the coil or, or we are we are looking at the front of um a okay so uh, this is a b of this side looking from the front okay and you know that uh, the the magnetic field actually goes uh, outside from the coil into the surface of the stator in straight line so that's why the b is straight like this so it's perpendicular to the surface and as it rotates okay as it rotates we know that the tangential velocity is always perpendicular to the movement okay so you have vab this way so now we can see that v and b is perpendicular to each other all right so if if we remember that um the induced voltage is actually v cross b and we dot or project into a the length of the coil which is we have done it previously right so what happens here is that um let me see 